How did uh, you feel comfortable going to school in Antigua? Mm -mm, no. It's rough. How about the teachers? They're kind to you, they treat you good? Yes. It's just the other students who give you a lot of trouble. Emmanuel, whose parents are members of the tiny minority of West African migrants in Dominica, finds his early days at the convent preparatory school in Roseau especially hard, as he's taunted for being different. Somebody, somebody me my food. I don't do anything to me. They said that my mom is stupid. He was red. No, he, he was black. You're of Afi Black. He was very, very small. Ah, he's a right boy here. Yes, he doesn't talk. He only so talks much. to me. Oh, I don't he know. He cannot talk. 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 He cannot talk. He cannot talk. So he, he talking. He talking like he talk. Talk. his baby. He... They, they, they call the Haitians names. They would call them ugly, stupid. Paul, from poetry. I could, I could give you a little story. One student came and said, Miss, I had one embarrassment yesterday. I said, what? Suddenly I went to get my lunch and Sarah called me. I said, so what? Miss, so what? Sarah is a Haitian. And so many people were in the restaurant and Sarah calling me. I didn't even answer. And he was, that's grade six, he's saying, yes, that was my greatest embarrassment. The girl was calling me because she had just come to the school. They were classmates, but he found that it was embarrassing for a Haitian to call him and other people should hear. He said, a Haitian, and she calling for people to hear? <laughs> so that was the attitude. And migrant children's right to education is affected by necessary administrative procedures. When I came, when I, I came to Antigua, I couldn't go to school. I, I live two days in my house because I can't come out the house. My mother, she you know, you know, got the document to make me go to school. So she, she tell me, when you go to school, not talk to nobody, not talk to nobody, because that can make that can make me go into a problem because they don't want that. No, they say that too much Spanish people are in the island. So when we came in here, uh, uh, the immigration give uh, give me fifth a month for staying here. So it's something like vacation. Teachers and students are also hampered by insufficient teaching tools because schools often don't know the number of immigrant children who will be on the school's roll. Many of the schools have been complaining when school opened in September, seen this great influx of non-national and as schools we never planned for that influx and so we are short of textbook, short of um, furniture. So what the ministry has sought to do to uh, alleviate the situation in school is to have a cut off period of June the 30th. I mean, once, what I have noted, once parents applied during that time and have all the paperwork in, I don't, I've never known of a problem of them getting into the school. So where do we go from here, especially as more migrant workers seek opportunities in neighboring Caribbean states and, as conditions improve, ultimately bring their children? In the countries we visited, teachers, parents and students want to see the education system change to meet the reality of a changing classroom. From immigration procedures, to language training, to new teaching materials and methods. And there's a need for teaching multiculturalism to help both teachers and students adapt to changing circumstances. I think the Ministry of Education should have an outreach to them. Come and check them out and see how they're doing or the guidance counselor for the area. You know, because there must be problems of adjustment. 
I think also we should have a kind of a reading laboratory where they can learn, you know, the English through a reading lab. I mean, I know that's a big demand, but, you know, that's how you learn a foreign language. I mean, they pick it up, but I think it would be easier for them, you know. And probably having, well, each school does have a, um, what do you call it, not a guidance counselor, a family life coordinator. And that person probably could take more interest in them. You know, your coming here now has made me realize that, you know, that they come and maybe they're afloat and maybe we should have been more, you know, involved in their adjustment. And everywhere, children are demanding to be treated equally, regardless of their origin, so that they can contribute to Caribbean society. It is not good um, to hate others because we all are the same and we all were made by one God.